Hi, this is Bob. Been an amateur radio operator for 56 years and really enjoy repairing rigs. I bought this one on eBay. Uh, the display did not work at all. You, the LED uh, numbers did not light up at all when I got it. You could hear noise in the speaker, however, and I put it on the uh, signal generator and found out that the receiver was working. I put it on the uh, dummy load and found the transmitter was working, but it only put out six or seven watts. So the display, uh, I traced down finally to this switch right here. That's the dim switch. There's the dim. You can almost see the numbers there on the camera. But the dim switch has the five volts going through it that supplies the LED readouts. And what had happened, this had set for a long, long time, and these switches get tarnished inside. And uh, tarnish is an insulator, so you have to get that tarnish off. Well, to get that off, I used a hypodermic syringe with number 10 oil in it. I inserted the syringe in right alongside that switch. Now, I turned the unit up on its back with this at the top. Um, let's see here. I got so many things in the way like this and then that way the oil will drain down in I used a hypodermic syringe now that switch has got a felt washer around it down in there so you have to work the syringe down in close to the shaft and around the felt washer and just put in a drop of oil on the top let it work its way down in the switch and as it's working its way down in there you work the switch rapidly and I worked it over a hundred times and guess what the numbers popped on and everything started working so that's one thing there and you can clean the rest of the switches that way too also you'll find these switches used on many different rigs and so you can uh, you can use that technique on the other rigs too it also works great on the volume controls to run a little bit of number 10 oil using a uh, hypodermic syringe and you can get those syringes very cheaply at your drugstore uh, in fact the druggist gave me one when I told him what I was going to do with it so uh, that was the first thing that got the dial working okay well then when you turn the dial it would go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and boom then it would go crazy it would read 147 something or whatever crazy stuff so oh gee got another problem well, I worked, and I worked, and I worked, and I worked trying to find that problem. I used up a lot of freeze mist uh, spraying on the ICs. I was sure I had a bad IC on that uh, counter board, which is mounted right up in here. And I worked, and I worked. Uh, finally, I narrowed it down to spraying the freeze mist right beside connector J2 and J1. And... Uh, I thought, well, there must be something in the circuit board, one of those through holes or something like that. But just to be on the safe side, I pulled off uh, J2 and J1 and looked at them. The connections looked really good. I put them back on and cleaned them with a pencil eraser. I put a little tiny bit of silicon grease on the pins, which is what I usually do to keep it from tarnishing, and then put it all back together, and it still had the same problem. But spraying the freeze mist I found on J2 connector caused it to start working. And then when it heated up, it would stop. So there's a loose connection, I think, in J2. Well, I thought, sure, it was one of the pins soldered into the board had a loose connection. But I pulled the connector off, and just to be sure, I took the little pins out of the connector. Now, you take those little pins out with a jeweler screwdriver. There, You stick it into the... Uh, into the connector on the side and press down on the little tab there's a slot for that and while you're pressing down you pull gently on the wire and they'll come right out then I took my soldering iron with a very small tip and 15 thousandths thick solder very tiny solder and I ran a little bit of solder into where the copper wires were in that connector now these connectors looked beautiful they looked like they were making good connection to that wire but they were not. I soldered all those pins and put it back together and the thing works beautifully now. It does not act up at all. And when you do that, be sure that you make a drawing here 
I made a drawing of the connector showing what wire goes where and what color. You don't want to get those all apart and then find out you don't know which one goes where. So make a little drawing first before you do that. So that was the main problem was a temperature sensitive connector J2 and these uh, connectors any of them can do it. I did not do all the rest of the connectors soldering them because I thought the likelihood of my making a mistake soldering and causing more trouble was more likely than, uh, than finding another loose connection. So I let the rest of them go. I just did that one connector J2 which is right in here. And then also I tightened up all the hardware I could find the screws. Quite often you'll find these mounting screws for the circuit boards and things will be getting loose and so go through and tighten up the screws uh, wherever you find the little screws tighten them up and I use a, a very small pocket screwdriver for that because I don't want to tighten those too tight and crack a circuit board or something like that okay and what else we got here uh, I had low output six seven watts and what I found was real simple on that one uh, I had it hooked up here to the bird watt meter and a bird dummy load and there's a coil right here that the signal comes through and uh, it was all squished and laying down flat and I thought maybe somebody squished that coil at the factory to adjust it but it really looked like it was not something like that it, it just looked to me like somebody had hit it accidentally or something so I spread the coil out like you see it and hit the transmit button it went from 6 watts to 12 watts so uh, that little coil was was not correct there and you can use a plastic tool here's a plastic tool here that I use and you can hold down the key uh, with it on FM and you can push those together and spread them apart until you get maximum output on your watt meter and that's the way you adjust that little guy right there and what else the controls I uh, the controls have a little hole in them uh, the volume controls and all have a little hole in them and I put a teeny drop of number 10 oil in there using the uh, hypodermic syringe and then work those back and forth a lot of times and that'll get those working really good so that's my IC211 it works really good now uh, I wish it had AM on it because we have an AM boat anchor net here in this area runs out of running out of Kalamazoo we got some real nice nets on uh, 6 meters and 2 meters coming out of Kalamazoo Got a six meter net run by K8 BKB, uh, nine o'clock on uh, Tuesday nights on uh, 50.140 uh, and just uh, out of Kalamazoo. So we got a nice group of guys on there. So I just thought I'd comment about that. So we got a nice working IC211 here now. I really like it. It's going on the operating bench and I'm looking forward to doing a lot of, uh, a lot of QSOs with this rig. So that's it for today, guys. 73s and good DX.